Hello there, it's the 19th of August 2023 and my bike tour around Iceland continues. Today is a short day, I'm starting at this campsite whose name I'm not even going to pronounce and I'm going to head along this road through to here and just down to Selfoss. It's a really really short day, um, just 20 kilometres. Here's some clips and commentary from the road. Here we go, speak in a bit. Cheers! Good morning, good morning. It is Saturday the 19th of August and the time is 11.56 before midday. Uh, I'm leaving the campground at a place whose name I've already forgotten. Ulf Botsbatten, something like that. And I've got a really, really short day today. Going to go back to Selfoss. And I intend to spend uh, two nights in Selfoss. Uh, get some food from the supermarket, have a look around the town. Um, I've got basically I've kind of got time to kill before my flight or before my um, my booking at the door is now ahead of you. yeah yeah Head thank you straight. or before my booking at where I am going to pack my bike up and it's not quite enough time to go anywhere it's a bit strange I seem to have painted myself into a corner so I enjoyed cycling around Thingbella Lake again uh, but now really I just need to cycle around the south coast around the I think it's the Reykjanes Peninsula and then back to Vogar camping where I started my tour anyway back to today expecting a relatively easy day quiet road to start with then getting back onto a main road it's a Saturday don't know what that means for traffic maybe everyone's already out and going to their weekend destinations rained a little bit overnight not expecting rain today hopefully not expecting it for the rest of the trip but weather does change quickly here and yeah that's about it really I guess uh, more or less my mind is turning more and more to uh, getting back home to Greece what I have to do to keep the business running and actually <laughs> Uh, in a, after a week after I arrive, we go into a Greek island for a, a while on holiday, which I think I've earned. So in the meantime, I will give you some recordings from the road so you can see what this is like. And if I think about it, I might do a, some sort of time lapse video of me setting the tent up as well. I'm not sure how interesting that is, but I'll give it a go. Okie dokie then, here we go. Yeah, it's a pretty quiet road. Will be until I reach the 35. I think this one is called the 350. It's like a spur road off of the 35. And when I do reach the 35, that'll be the, the fourth time I've cycled that particular stretch of road second time in the direction of Selfoss but fourth time altogether I think that's right no maybe third time anyway I, I do know that bit of road by now <clears throat> so a few thoughts about bike touring I first started my, my first bike tour I think I was like 27 and I flew out to New Zealand uh, with a couple of panniers, bought a bike there for cycled around for two months I think it was with the panniers I brought over with me sold the bike for pretty much the same amount I bought it for and came back and that was my first real taste of it and on that bike tour I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger through the tour and it just seemed like a I don't know, it just seemed like the ideal way to travel. I've done lots of backpacking before that. After that bike tour, I actually did another backpacking trip, but it just didn't feel the same. It didn't feel like I had any freedom, like you're tied to a bus timetable. and You always seem to be on the same route as a lot of other people, and it all seemed a little bit pointless. I wasn't really getting any insights into the countries or, or myself actually and that's probably what I think bike touring comes down to for me is uh, you get insights about yourself 
and quite a few bike tours later I'm doing this one I'm how old am I 51 so you know time's moved on still love bike touring I still think it's the best way to travel still get insights about yourself one of them is yeah I can still do it <laughs> uh, but I think it teaches you to overcome problems teaches you a bit of patience teaches you to appreciate the, the little things uh, maybe to maximize the resources you've got whether that's time energy food good weather whatever it is I think it helps if you have a positive mindset going into bike tours and if you're just on the positive side I think doing a few tours you'll you'll keep developing that positiveness because once you know you've had a cold wet and comfortable night and know you can survive then you you realize how much more you're capable of and you know it's not just about cycling distances or or that sort of thing it's a little bit about resilience mental resilience really I think when it comes down to physicality people of all shapes and sizes can bike tour once you've got over that mental hurdle and then you keep developing that mentality I guess it just makes you a stronger person in the end at least that's what I think other people get different things out of tours I'm sure there's some people just like to uh, to you know, travel as much distance as they can in two weeks and that's great and other people like to do 20 kilometers a day and really get to know a country and that's great you know each, each of their own but for me it's more about getting to know myself know thyself as they said in ancient Greece and that's the, the, the good you know and the bad to be fair And then you kind of accept yourself a little bit more as well perhaps anyway I think I might have gone off on a tangent on that little speech so I'll continue going downhill towards Selfos just coming up to the main road now there's a river on my left hand side and I've mentioned in a couple of videos the amount of flies here where you can kind of see the flies I don't know if they're just kind of going into the water or what they're doing but there's also a couple of fly fishermen out there and I have to say even though I think I've only ever fished for eels once in my life this would be a perfect day for fishing because it's quite still uh, the river looks very nice and this guy had kind of waded out and looked like he was fly fishing there's a few other fisher people fisher people on the bank very politically correct of me wasn't it saying fisher people not fishermen so yeah I have no idea what sort of fish would be in there and it's a weekend so yeah it must be a great way to spend some time I prefer it on the bike of course I think some people come to Iceland for the fishing as well. I mean, you have to get various licenses and permits and whatnot. But just like there's bike, uh, bicycle holidays, there's trekking holidays, climbing and fishing. So a lot of people concentrate on the golden circle as their must-do thing, which has got you know most of the tick box attractions. But if you've got niche interests, definitely uh, base a trip around that as well. Golf must be a good one because I've never seen a country with so many golf courses as Iceland. It seems strange saying it but it just feels like every single village has got a golf course just as they've got like a swimming pool and a hot pot. So just getting to this uh, Main road now, 35. Follow this way for 600 meters. And I'm going to 
be turning right at 600 meters apparently. And then uh, it'll be a busier road then into Selfoss. Shouldn't take too long though. And then I'll go into the campground and just see how busy it is, if it's not too busy. And then stay there for the two nights I think. If it's too busy then I might change my plans to stock up at the supermarket and carry on to another place instead. I don't know why an Icelander would particularly want to stay in Selfoss though. Although I understand if you're doing like if you're a tourist and you're doing the Golden Circle, then yeah it's a very logical point to stay. That's why I'm staying there. You tend to find that a lot of campgrounds get filled up by Icelanders, particularly in August. You know, they just go where the weather's best. And it looks like in the south for the next few days, the weather's gonna be pretty good. So when I cycled this particular stretch of road before, it was very windy. It didn't make it particularly enjoyable. There's not that much wind today though, so that's a good thing. But so far at least the traffic is heading out of Selfoss. I'm sure that some traffic will pass me by very soon. It'll already be a massive bus. So from here I think I've got five or six kilometers to go to the campground. And I've also got a bridge to go over at some point which I think has a path next to it so I'm going to take the path this time just because. So this is the bridge I was on about and it looks like there's a cycle path to the left of it. If this was in the UK there would be like some bollard or something in the way so you couldn't get your bike through. So let's see what this is like. Yeah seems to be okay.